Okay, so we'll be recording today, and I'm going to go through a little bit of a question and answer uh, beforehand. I had, what was the first question I said to, to ask about? Was that, uh, Sue, was that you? Or was it Carolyn? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it was me. The question was, how do we get to the other classes prior to the one? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to share my screen here really quick. And... The so there's a YouTube channel that Bob sends the link out to. So everything we, I'm doing with MacNexus will get loaded up to the YouTube channel. But if you go to Lincoln Hills Apple User Group, in fact, I probably need to change my resolution. Zoom everything in a little bigger. Is that bigger for everybody? Yes. Okay. That's really big. Okay, so if you go to lhaug.org or Lincoln Hills Apple User Group, then um, actually let me get this screen set for the recording to here and it's lhaug.org or Lincoln Hills Apple user group and if you click on the videos tab not only just mine but all the other ones that are done in uh, for Lincoln Hills Apple user group are there so a lot of times they mimic what I'm doing here. This was a good one. This is about doing from your iPhone and your iPad doing uh, like making books and things like that. That was Andy Petro who does a good job. And then the capture the moment was very similar to the class I did last month for our group here. So, so we just click on those and off we go. Yeah. And they're just, they go to their YouTube on there. So that, that works out. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, regarding the, uh, the other question is that uh, kind of came up two part about uh, maintenance on your Mac. Well, you really don't need to do a lot of maintenance. Um, there's these programs out there and I don't recommend any of them. Um, the computer does a good job on its own. And the one thing you do want to do though is you do want to restart your computer at least every two weeks or if things get lower, you start getting beach balls and things like that. So I think that's, uh, that's important. So, um, but what you can do is, um, obviously you check the empty the trash. I do recommend malware bites if things are starting to act weird. It's a program that looks for adware and things like that. Malwarebytes.com and it's B-Y-T-E-S. Um, but the other thing that came up was how do we kind of do a bigger reset? First of all, if your computer is just totally locked up and you can't do anything with it, you can do the unceremonious total shutdown by pressing and holding the power button. I, it only needs about five seconds, but I always tell everybody 10 seconds because everybody cheats. So you hold the button down as long as you can for, um, uh, or uh, not as long as you can. It, don't wait, don't do it just when the screen goes dark. You want to continue holding it and then start it like normal. Now there's another, um, another thing that you can do. Oh, I don't know what does with it. I said, we're not sure the kids. Hang oh on. goodness, we're right on. Um, okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot. All right, so. Um, the other thing you can do is there's, there's two ways to do a further reset. One is resetting the SMU. And in that case, like on an iMac, uh, there's different ways to do it on your laptop. But on an iMac, you would shut the computer down completely. You would unplug the power plug from the back. And leaving it unplugged while it's unplugged, you would then press and hold the power button for five seconds. Then release it, plug the computer back in, plug the power back in, and then press the power button and start it like normal. There's a keyboard command, and I'll try to pull that up. Let's see. Uh, 
reset VRAM Mac. And it's command option VR. I'm sorry, PR. So if you look at this little here, here is reset the command. So you're, what happens is as soon as you press the power key, as soon as you press the power button, you immediately hold down these four keys. Command, which is always right next to the space bar. Option. Command, option, P as in Paul, R as in Robert. This is resetting the PRAM, we used to call it, it's NVRAM, but that's the, it was called PRAM and that's why it's P and R. So Command, option, PR. You hold those down immediately on reboot. Continue holding them down until you hear the startup chime at least four times. And after that, release it. And then it, what it will do is it will go ahead and um, uh, it, it clears away all the memory that's kind of in the chips themselves. Oh, and here's the other one. So if you have a laptop uh, that doesn't have a removable battery, you hold down command option, I'm sorry, it's option control shift and the delete the uh, power key. So, but you wouldn't want to look up your specific one for what's called reset the SMC or reset the power supply. And so those those that, will clear out a lot of kind of old stuff. Go did, ahead. I'm sorry, because I'm getting the beach ball all the time. And like today when I started, uh, just sat down, I, I had to restart the computer because I had a black screen. Um, yeah, that would that. It, this is always a good thing to help. You also want to go to Malware Bytes and run it and see if it's anything. The other I, thing, I I encourage, that, yeah. other thing I encourage you to do is go up to the Apple logo, come down to About This Mac, and you want to look at storage. You want to make sure that you have lot. You have if your storage is getting down here where there's not much left. Time Machine's no problem, but on your actual hard drive, if you've got your if it's getting pretty full that can slow things down and create problems. If you get below 10%, it's critical that you take care of it. So any other questions on that, go ahead and unmute yourself or click on participants and raise your hand. Uh, I'd be happy to answer, but go ahead and unmute yourself if you have questions on these kind of things. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hey, hey Ken, quick question. A yeah. series Siri helped me out. It's a little different um, thing, but I've lost my cursor on my uh, laptop a couple of times. It's never happened before. And thanks to this uh, course, I've gotten better about asking questions of Siri. And uh, she told me a couple of things to do and it, it worked. I had to do one was, uh, I think, command and the tab key and it came back. Another time I had to just close my desk, but what's happening? Any more comments of what to do or on this? Well, make sure that you're not upgraded, but make sure you're up, uh, updated on your current software. Now, those this NVRAM and this Reset SMC could address that also. That would be a, a definitely one to look at. Okay, thanks. Okay. Ken, that um, malware bites, uh -huh. it's an annoying, thing that comes up every time I turn on the computer. Uh, but you're liking that feature, well, right? Well, it's, it's, it serves its purpose, but I tell it not to run the scan. I go into the settings and just tell it to just not do anything unless I tell it to. There's no way to keep it from showing up. Yeah, go into the preferences on it, but that's, okay. that's what you just want to kind of turn everything off. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I always try to bring in tech news and things like this. This was something Tesla released the other day, and I thought this was pretty poignant. So they have new statistics for autopilot with autopilot engaged. Now, obviously, autopilot can work on city streets and it can work on freeways, but more of the miles on autopilot are, are on freeways. So this is a little bit skewed, but I did want to point this out because it's pretty amazing. So when autopilot is engaged, there's one accident in every 4.53 million miles, which is amazing. When 
the average in the US is one accident for 479,000 miles. So uh, when autopilot's not engaged because of the active safety features, it's one accident in 2.27 million miles. So again, that would, re, uh, that would coincide with that. And then in Tesla's, it's one accident every 1.56 mile without autopilot, without active safety features. So that just lets you know it's kind of skewing it a little bit, but you're three times less likely. But here you're, what is it, 100 times less likely, if I'm not mistaken, or anyway, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing and pretty revealing. And uh, Tesla's being, starting to be very transparent on that kind of stuff. So here's the chart. So anyway, that's that being said, and oh, there's an ad on the right, and that's not my choice. So anyway, uh, any questions going forward before we dig into photos? Today, I'm primarily going to go over photos. Um, I'm going to start out with doing, doing editing on the Mac and showing you what you can do. Um, it's, it, there's some amazing tools built in there's also some amazing tools that you can uh that you can do uh as add-ons or extensions they call it so and let's see somebody asked the question how good is the camera on the new iphone se uh and how much better is the camera on the and they left it blank so i guess i could fill in the blank there um Actually, the, the new iPhone SE is an incredible, it, it, incredible camera, uh, but it's not as good as the iPhone uh, 11 Pros. They are fantastic. That being said, if you're looking at new phones, uh, Apple did just announce, uh, well, normally the second week in September is when we see the new iPhones. Uh, they will be delayed a couple to a few weeks. So look for new iPhones around October. And that has to do with sourcing of materials and things because of COVID. So Don McBride, you have a question. <clears throat> Go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. <clears throat> I'm trying to um, re-partition um, my backup disk. And I can't. I want to partition your backup disk. Pardon? Why do you want to partition your backup disk? Because I put more memory in and I need... Um, memory is not hard drives. That's storage space. Well, well I'm backing you. up. I want, to, I want to do a... Um, well, what's the thing that backs up your... makes a bootable disk? But, well, that's another program. So if you want to do that, yeah, you could partition. But hard drives are so cheap, I wouldn't do the partition like that. Okay, well... Anyway, I want to get the partitions off and just get a fresh hard drive. And I can't, I'm using disk utility. Are you in Catalina? No. Okay. Yeah, just go to disk utility and partition it or erase it and then partition it. Yeah, well, I tried that and it won't, um, won't do it. Let me see, erase. Yeah, I'm, do I'm doing it right now. Um, well, okay, so we're going to move on. Okay. So, but nobody... Nobody wants to see how the omelets are made. So, uh, all right. So I'm gonna go in and we're gonna go into photos here first and we're going to um, show the, uh, um, just some basic editing that you can do in the Mac and then I'm gonna use some other tools to enhance that. Uh, this first image is, Some of you may have seen this already. This, this was, I was out, I've been trying to capture the comet Neowise and uh, I was not very lucky. So one morning I was out early and I saw this and it looked just like comet Neowise. So I'm gonna call it comet Neowise when in fact it was just a stain on the walking path that I was on. So anyway. Uh, I don't need to do any modifications here. I could kind of get rid of that thing up there, but I won't do that. So let's see here. Let's go in. So I'm going to go through, and the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to 
to adjust some things to, uh, to um, okay there. Um, so this is the famous North Lake, which um, was, is uh, in right outside of Bishop, California. And North Lake, this is the old High Sierra. This is the location that the wallpaper for High Sierra was. But if you look down here in the lower right, you'll see there's a couple fishermen there. Well, I really didn't want them in my scene. So I'm gonna go in and let's see, I'm gonna edit. So if I'm in my photo, I double click the photo to make it full size. And then I hit edit. So once I edit, I actually have to move my little cursor out of the way. So I have an option in edit to do many different things. And I'm going to talk about the edit window. First is the adjust. And when I go to adjust, it puts these menus up over here. And I'm not going to, mine are more extensive than yours. We're going to go over those in a minute. I'm just kind of going to give you the lay of the land here. And feel free to pop in at any time if, if you have questions. So. <coughs> Excuse me. So the other one is <clears throat> filters. And I explained about filters last month. Filters are kind of this overlay. And I don't really like to, to work with filters that much. You can do different things. Obviously, you can go monotone or something like that, silver tone. Uh, I can do dramatic, dramatic cool, vivid color, different things like vivid warm, et cetera. But filters are, uh, and filters, any, anything, anytime you put a filter on, you can take it off. And I talk about filters as being like a plastic overlay that, ha that has color. And you can always remove that plastic overlay. Um, the next one is crop. And the crop one, it, 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 it's really interesting. First, when you activate crop, it comes up and shows you this this little scale here. And it thinks that this thing is already pretty much horizontal and vertical if you want. But I can always move it and adjust my horizon, okay? So, and I'm gonna reset that back to normal. Now, when you, um, you can also crop in from the edges, and I could really crop, in fact, just to do this, we're gonna crop into where these guys are. So it'll be blown up a little bit better. Now, obviously that is much less of a photo, but it's cropped. And you can see, obviously this photo doesn't have, we're zoomed in so much that it starts to lose clarity. So when you do crop, you get these images up here. So I could flip the direction of it that wouldn't work well if there were signs or any markers or anything like that, but that's the flip. Then the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio, when you crop it, original would be exactly the four by three with which, with which the photo was taken. So that, as you can see, is four by three. Then you could make it a 16 by nine. You could do an eight by 10. And when I've, this is called constraining the crop. So if I take it back and put it at a four by three, now as I move my crop handles, see how I'm trying, I, I basically am moving them both in the same ratio. So this is still a four, a four by three ratio. And you can always do custom, and of course you can do landscape mode and portrait mode from right down there. Custom would be one to one, but the last one is, is free form. So if you go free form, then I can, adjust this photo however I want when I crop it. Okay, and then I just like, now everything we do with the photos today, you can always, always revert to original. And reverting to original is great because it takes everything right back to the original photo. So I'm gonna go back in to adjust. Oh, I'll go back across the top here. So this little uh, info triangle, if I tap that, that shows me what, this was an iPhone photo and it 
shows where it was. It shows all the settings, etc. You can toggle that on and off. We're going to talk about this in a second. This is if I want to favorite the photo. So when I do that, when I'm looking through my photos, I can see which ones are favorited. This is to rotate it. And if you hold your option key down, it rotates the other way. And you can see there's my option key down, my option key up. Magic wand. Now this is really, really good. It's auto enhance and it does a pretty good job and I'm gonna click it and you should be able to see a difference on the screen. It kind of highlighted it brought, it's not exactly how I would wanna do this photo, but it is a really good way to just do photos quickly. All right. We're gonna go back and in a minute, we'll talk about this ellipse, ellipsis right here. But I wanna go back to adjust. So I'm in the adjust mode. Now, there are a bunch of things over here on the left-hand side and I have most of them exposed. You may not have all of these exposed. There's a little button that will say add and as you add it, you can set all of these different ways to adjust photos on the right-hand side, okay? So I'm gonna just dive into a couple of these and it enhances your photo much more than just auto-enhance would. So if we go over here, if I expose light, at first, so here is an auto and if I click that, it's gonna automatically see how it adjusted these settings. That's what it thinks is right. So I'm gonna say no, I'm gonna say reset adjustments. Now, if I go up here and I move this slider from left to right, you'll notice it's making some overall adjustments, but it's adjusting all those different seven parameters. And the way I like to work with adjustments is, I will take them to the max and then walk them back the other way and kind of see where I want to be in between. Now, anytime I do that, let's say I go, I want to go back to where I was, there's a little undo right there. And if I click undo, it sets it back to normal. Now, <clears throat> generally speaking, iPhone shots are pretty neutral and do a really good job. So you don't really have to adjust iPhone shots too much, but, I'm gonna, this is not a photo I'm gonna do a lot of adjustments on here. I'm using this photo to show you how I can get rid of these people down here. So if I go down here and I go to retouch, see this little Band-Aid? If I click that and I click the little, right here I'll click this little uh, brush. Now, Oh, it's pretty small, so I'm going to increase the size. As I slide this, you can see what I'm going to use gets bigger or smaller. So I'm going to just use about this size, and I'm going to hover over this, and I'm going to click and drag. And now, those guys are gone, but it's pretty blurry, isn't it? Well, it works, but it's not great. So I'm going to undo that by Command-Z but I'm gonna show you another little tool, one that I love, it's, it's called um, Snap Heal. So if I go to Snap Heal here, that's an extension, and I went up and clicked on that. So now I'm gonna adjust this much smaller, and I'm gonna go right here, and now I'm gonna say Erase. And look at how much cleaner it is. It did the, it did the, the lake in pretty well, and you could hardly tell they were there. Okay, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna cancel that just so we can have it. I'm gonna go to another photo though. Next one I have in line. Let's see here. So this is a photo, and somebody took this with their Android phone, and I was uh, sailing this boat. And you'll see coming out of my head, it looks like I have an antenna. Well, I wanna try get rid of that. So I'm gonna to go to retouch 
and I'll use about that size. And I simply paint over it. I click and drag over that and see it kind of got rid of it, but not so good. So I'm going to go back to Snap Heal. And again, I click on this three ellipsis. This is a program I've purchased. All of these are available to purchase. And I click Snap Heal. And now I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And I will simply go like that. And now erase it. And it does such a good job of defining the hat the way it was. Let's say there's this, there's this channel buoy over here. Let's say I want to get rid of it. It senses what's behind it and tries to fill in. And now that channel, that buoy marker is gone, you can see. Great stuff. Uh, if I wanted to get rid of this uh, sign right here, this, nav, this thing for NavPro, boom. gone. It's just really, really, really amazing stuff. It's great. Okay, so I'll cancel that. I'm going to show you another thing that's very common to that you would use this for is, so here's a photo taken years ago. Somebody took it of me in a boat when I was water skiing. First of all, it I need to rotate it. So if I hold the option key down and rotate it, but you can see on the left side here, this is a scan of a photo and it's got a crease in it. So if I go up here and use Snap Heal, I'll get rid of some of these artifacts. I'll make it a little smaller again. So uh, a little bit bigger. So I'm making this circle size a little bigger. I'll get rid of that little mark. I'll get rid of that mark, get rid of that mark. So I'm basically just drawing over that crease. And let's see what happens when I hit erase. Since it's working, it gives you these little facts as you go along. I was looking for it in the app store and I didn't find it. Snap heels are not there, really. Well, let me, let's go take a look in a sec. So you can see here, it's really done a wonderful job. Um, let's go out of this, let's go. It may actually not be in the app store. It's not, so let's go. I've had it for so darn long. I think it may be part of something else. Snap here. Oh, it's part of Luminar and Sky. Yeah, so I'll show. So Luminar. And, well, actually, a sky loom is what it's called. Um, here is Snap Heal right here. And it is, let's see. I think it's part of Luminar now, maybe. Does anybody know, Bob? Yeah, it looks like it's part of Luminar. So Luminar is a pretty extensive thing. I don't know, Tim. Not sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, initially, it was it was in the App Store and separate. Some of the places pull their stuff out of uh, the App Store because they have a little more latitude this way. But it still interacts completely with photos. Somebody asked a question: Will these work on scanned photograph? And yeah, I just answered that question, Lynn, which you put in your question. Okay. So Snap Heal CK is what it is. Let's see. Oh no, I don't want to go to Facebook. All right, so that's, uh, it looks like it's from Skyloom and I think it's part of Luminar. Uh, if Al was here, he would be able to tell me that for sure. Let's go on back to photos. 
Okay, so obviously you can see how much cleaner it makes it. It's not perfect, and if you really zoom down in, you can uh, see where it's done it. But if you really want to get rid of the fine details, you then can even zoom in and make the, the brush a lot smaller to do it. And there's a clone tool here that allows you to put something that, um, let's say you wanted to have uh, a background move from one spot to the other. Actually, this is pretty interesting. Let's try eliminate the, I'll be water skiing without a rope here. Let's see what happens with this. Yeah, see how it got a little blurry here, which isn't good, but it would have got rid of the rest of it. So again, and you can hit Command Z, or in this case, I'll just cancel the changes. And then it brings me back to it. I'm gonna show you uh, the built-in one to try to get rid of this with the Apple's built-in one. And again, it's the little uh, Band-Aid, and I'm gonna take and try to eliminate this. We'll eliminate that, and we'll just do a little bit of this. It just doesn't do quite as good a job. And it works, but see, it's just kind of not as good. So something like Snappy, if you're doing that, I just, I love it. So, all right, so let's uh, exit out of that photo. All right. Um, so now I want to do some other other things with other programs. And in fact, um, let me find, oh, this would be a good one for, so this is just, I just happened to shoot this. This was a neat little thunderhead up here. This photo is nothing special, but it allows us to do some, some different editing with it. First, let's hit the magic, uh, the magic wand auto enhance and see what it does kind of brighten it up a little bit. I'm not good with that, so I'll just Command Z. I'm gonna go over here and do some of the Apple built-in edits. So when I go to light and color. So we're missing a lot in this sky, and you'll notice it's a little hazy. So if I do some of these adjustments, it kind of helps it out a little bit. Then I can come down here and I can move the color slider and again, go to the extremes, and then you can kind of see what the effect is. I'm gonna undo both of those. And I'm gonna now just look at doing kind of the, the you, you can do, as I move this to the left, this slider, you can see it's increasing the brilliance. So let's try the brilliance more. See, that's not too bad. It brings out the foreground and helps a little bit. Shadows I'm gonna show you in a minute. Contrast could be brought up a little bit, that helps. But down here, your color is where you wanna do a lot. So if I oversaturate this, you can see that's gone too much into it, but I can bring it back. So um, the other thing you can always do, because sometimes your photos are a little off is, you come down here to where it says white balance, and that's one of the ones you add. So we find a neutral gray. Well, that can work with white also. So if I clip the little, click the little eyedropper and try put it in a neutral gray area like that, you see it kind of made it, you kind of made it so that it's, um, the way that it should be. And of course my ring ring doorbell just went off. I think it's just a package delivery. Excuse me for the interruption. All right, so you can see that that kind of gave me some neat colors by doing the neutral balance. But to take this, I'm gonna take this all the way back to original and I'm gonna show you a program that I absolutely love, especially for photos like this. And it's called Affinity Haze Removal. And Affinity is a whole suite of different ones. And if you buy Affinity Photo, you get all these other extensions. So if I go to Affinity Haze Removal, let's watch on the screen and you'll see what happens here. 
it's fantastic. Takes a little while because it's doing a lot. Ken? Yes. I have a bunch of pictures. Oh, you're breaking up there. Um, try again, Norm. I have pictures of the uh, members over on the right side of my screen and it takes up a good portion of your photograph. Um, so you can, at the very top of that screen, there's a little, there's a line where you could, um, uh, I can't display it because it won't let me. Um, but if you, if you look at the photos, there should be four settings. Are you on a, are you on a Mac? Yeah, MacBook Pro. Okay. So if you tap on the, where they are, there should be a line, a single box, a double box, and then a bunch of boxes. If you go to the line, that should reduce that. Hmm. Okay. Well. No? The time. <laughs> I didn't find the, the line. Well, you, no, it's, it's, it's where your photo, okay. So, um, let me just try this. Hang on here. Right now, do you see everybody in a box or what? No, there's there are four four pictures. There's you're on you're on top across the top. Okay, on the left hand side of the first picture, is there a line, a box, two boxes, and nine boxes? No, I don't see anything like that. Well, you need to go hover your cursor over the pictures by the pictures. Okay. And there should be a view there. That's a Zoom thing. Now let's let's uh, oh up up above. Okay, yeah, they've shown it there. So go to the line, and that'll reduce it. Done. Great. Thank you. No, that's good because everybody's in the same boat. So okay. All right. So what I've done here is I've used so so now with Affinity Haze Remover when it comes up. It, I have this slider bar, and it actually didn't do as great a job of this one as I thought it would, but you can see the difference. To the right is the original, to the left is the way it affected it. So I'm gonna hit cancel, and let's go look if there's another photo that might be a little bit better. Okay. So is that supposed to be in the app store? Affinity Photo is also, it's, I believe it's not in the App Store now. Okay. So how do you get it? Um, you go to, a, just do a search for Affinity Photo and download it. And why, there we go. Um, let's see. Well, let's try haze removal on this one. Even though it's not very hazy, it will probably enhance this sky. So I'm gonna go to edit again in the upper right and click affinity haze removal. Let's see what happens here. We need the Jeopardy theme song. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Written by Phil Donahue. Is that who wrote that? Yeah, That's I'm reading the Trebek trivia. book right now. What's that? I'm reading Trebek's book right now. Oh, just wow, that's uh, that's good trivia. Well, I think I'm locked up here. You can hear me still, right, Bob? Yeah, and I just found an article. It looked like the uh, uh, Snapio became part of Luminar back in February. Okay. What it looks like. And it's wow. a, called Snapio CK now. It's a, like an extension. Right. Okay, so 
unfortunately, that didn't work on this photo very well either. So give me a sec here. Uh, Actually, this is, this is one that I wanted to do. Okay, so for looking at this, this is a shot. Um, this is in Arizona, not a great shot, but let's go ahead and let's apply. Uh, I said the wrong name, it's Merv yeah. Griffin. Not, not I'm sorry? It's Merv Griffin, not Phil Donahue. Ah, thank you. Okay, so this should help this photo quite a bit because you see stuff in the distance. Sorry, it's taken so long, but and this is on a pretty fast computer, so it's just moved, doing a lot of pixels. All right, so now if you can see on my screen, the left-hand side is the uh, before or the after, and the right-hand side is the before. And boy, my computer is really lagging. I may have to restart photos here. There you go. So look at the, so here's the original, and as I slide this across, you can see what it really does, especially in these clouds. And you'll notice the mountain range in the distance. See how it's cutting out all that haze? So this is the equivalent of having a polarizer filter on your camera. And this is, to me, very dramatic. And we are not really manipulating the photo. All it's doing is enhancing parts of the photos. There are programs like Luminar that could do, let's say this was a totally blue sky. You could put your own sky in there if you want. That's called sky replacement. And personally, I will never do that to a photo. I just, my photo, my photos have to be what I saw. Now, enhancing the color and stuff a little bit helps. In fact, even look on the rocks, the color of the rocks are helped a little bit. But this ridge that's right behind us, you can see how the trees start to pop out just from using this haze removal. And this is just, this is just artificial intelligence just doing that. So that's a really good example of what haze removal can do. And I'll save those changes. Then once we've saved those changes, I can do some enhancements on here. Like I could darken this up a little bit. Again, take it to the extremes to see what's going on. Then I could even boost the color a little bit. If you boost the color too much, then it gets very artificial looking. And to me, I just, I, I don't like that. It's, it's boosted all right, but it sure looks fake. It looks more like somebody's painted it in. So I'm gonna reset those. And if I darken this rock up a little bit, now we start to get a few shadows here. So I come down to the one called shadows and I can bring stuff out of the shadows and brighten up that stuff in the foreground. But I'm going to show you in another photo how to really work with the shadows. That'll be our next task here. So um, that one's not so good, but I think I have... This photo is pretty good here. So we've got a, a tough lighting situation. I've got sun in the background and all this, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna show here how to edit this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right to the shadow slider so we can get more of the faces. Now, as I slide this, you can see how much brighter that's become without blowing out the photo. And that's to the max right there. So if I bring it back a little bit, you see that what looks, what this is how dark the faces were. And now we're able to bring the faces in. Okay. Now I'm going to also apply haze removal to this and you'll see how that'll make the sky pop. 
you know, these real faint clouds and this faint contrail up there. Any questions while it's doing its little uh, process here? It usually doesn't take this long. I think it's because we have Zoom running and I did do a restart earlier just to make sure everything was good to go. Ken, what's the name of the program again? This one is part of Affinity Photo and this particular plugin is called Haze Removal. Thank you. And Affinity Photo is just got a great suite. Uh, so Lynn wants to know, can we see more of what we all can do without buying more programs? Well, that's kind of what I'm showing you here. And the, the higher end programs, they, you know, you pay for them. But the thing is, they're very reasonable compared to what prices used to be. So uh, I think that Affinity, I think they both have free 30 day trials, if I'm not mistaken. And that works out really well. So in a sec here, as soon as this gets reset, there you go. So notice the sky in the background, the difference between the before and after there and the post, and it really does help enhance this photo. And we've already brightened up the shadows. So those are incredible. Um, but let's just take this photo back. I'll hit cancel and let's see what we can do with this photo with the free stuff. Now all this stuff on the right is built into Apple. So let's try make some of those same enhancements. I'm just going to do the slider here. Notice how the back, the, the sky is starting to do it. And if I go here, see, we've done a good job getting that photo kind of to what it can do with haze remover, but it just does, it's a lot more work on your own. But see, that's helped it quite a bit. And that's built in to your sidebar on Apple Photos. Now I do, I just want to point out again, the most important thing, no matter what you do to this photo, you can always revert to original. For instance, let's just say that I want to crop this guy out and we'll crop Jerry out over here. Even if I hit done, and save, I can always, always edit, revert to original. And they're back. So it's all non-destructive and that's the requirement, whether you're using the Apple, uh, the Apple controllers over here, or whether you're using Haze Remove or any of those, the original photo remains untouched no matter what you do. Okay, so let's go over a couple other things. Um, yeah, actually, so this was a, this is a photo that it just kind of, you know, this light here, we want to enhance it a bit. So we can go in to edit. And I pretty much, I want to bring out a little bit of the color of it. So I'll bring the saturation up. And this was the Eastern Sierras in October. And I'll probably bring this this way. And look, look at how it changes the mood of this photo just by making those simple adjustments. You can totally change what, what is really, again, that's just a good old snapshot. Well, now we're making it into pretty much a photo at that point. And then I can adjust any of the different things. I can adjust the exposure, the brilliance. And again, I play with these sliders. A lot of people use a thing called the histogram. I'm not good with histograms, so I'm not doing that. And notice we haven't really washed out this and it's still in the front like that. So I can probably go a little bit more contrast here. <laughs> and those are pretty amazing things that you can do with a photo that here's the original, here's the enhanced. Original, enhanced. You'll notice up in the upper left, I have these two little boxes. Show photo without adjustments by clicking and holding on it and then 
there's with the enhancements. Oh, got a couple other people here waiting to get in. Sorry, I didn't see it. Okay. So, uh, you know, and, and the, the thing is with photos too, when you go to crop, oh, now that's interesting. It's not showing my rule of thirds. I wonder why that is. Maybe when I go to, ah, there it is. So in, when you go to, when you crop something, if you go to click on it, it shows what's called the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds are, you know, you don't put somebody's, uh, you don't put a photo right in the center of somebody's face because it looks like a mugshot. You put them in the, in one of the intersections in the, in the thirds. So that's when you're doing cropping, let's say if I, I you know, this one isn't really a good one for it. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. But let's look at, Yeah, here's a, we'll, we'll do this one with rule of thirds. So when I go to edit and hit crop, ideally this is the focus point. So I really want to have it be kind of in the rule of thirds and I'll probably bring up from the bottom a little bit. And just cropping makes a huge difference in your photos. So that does it there. We can apply different filters to this. And that looks different than the original. So if we revert to original, see, it's just kind of a snapshot. All right, uh, let's go back to some of the photos here. This was one, this is actually an iPhone shot and it turned out pretty well. Um, surprisingly well because this is tough lighting but you know I've got a little bit of a bright light here so I'm gonna go in here and I'll, I can use the Apple version of the remove and let's take a look at that so I'll hit retouch and let's just kind of get rid of that bright light it lessened it a little bit I'm gonna go do it with snap heel And I'll make this smaller because it really detracts from the photo. So there you can see it's been removed. This one like here, erase. And then let's just get rid of this person over here talking on the phone. So we can think it's back in the 1800s. But these, I guess, would be gas lights back then. So, oh, that didn't do very well. So in that case, they just command Z out of it. We'll leave her there for now. Um, you know, you could clean up these little lights down here. But let's go in and let's go see. Um, it was called Aurora HDR. Well, first of all, I can enhance this. So there's some different things I can do there. I can bring the color back up but it kind of makes everything a little bluish. But if I go to, let's reset both of those. And if I go to, I'm gonna to go to what's called Aurora HDR. Now this should boost the color. HDR, HDR stands for High Dynamic Resolution. And it really will make photos pop. So this was one called Aurora HDR, and you can see it brought in a lot more color in here, but I have at the bottom different settings I can do for different effects, but I have all kinds of effects over here I can do. And if I go down here, so there's, there's just an amazing amount of things you can do with this photo. And, and if you really spend the time, you can just, do pretty much anything. Like in here, I can turn the blues down a little bit or turn the blues up a little more. Specific colors. Don't really want that. Let's go see what the greens, if we get any greens out of this. So we can do different things like that. Color toning. 
dodge and burn. So this is the old dark room techniques. You can start painting. In other words, you can dodge and like if I wanted to lighten up the sky and do different things like this. This is all in what's called Aurora HDR. I don't think there's a 2020 yet, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. But the other one is you have presets down here and you can see how that the presets will do different ones and then you, within each preset, you can adjust it. I'm gonna hit cancel on that and I'm gonna show you one that is pretty interesting that I use and hopefully I have it loaded. Oh, that's interesting. I do not, I have this only on my laptop and that's one called Photo Lemur. Hmm. Well, let's show you another built-in thing that's the holy, for the longest time people kept asking, can I put, can I write on my photos? Well, you can. So if you go up into the edit and click this ellipsis, even though these are other programs, you have markup. So if we go to markup, that's built in. And if we go to markup here, and let's say I want to do, there's the text. So I click this text box, and I, this is in Lech, Austria. So I can take that, and I can move that wherever I want. I can increase the font size. I can make it bold. I can change the color. And let's see, kind of that golden might be good. So that's called markup. Markup can also, you can put things like uh, shapes. If I wanted to point out where the So I can draw a little arrow. It's supposed to make it an arrow, it didn't. Huh. Let's go back to shapes. And choose arrow in shapes. Right here, right? Yep. Yeah. That's right. Oh, there it was. I was I guess I was misclicking. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, you just had the line. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was misclicking when I was doing it. So then uh, any of these, and they can all be adjusted, et cetera, you know. Make it a curved arrow if you want, and all kinds of. And then obviously with a star, you can make the, you can adjust the arms and the star, adjust it size, all the shapes. You can do whatever you want. Just like in say Pages or in Keynote, you can do all those things up here. But that is called markup, and it actually becomes part of the photo when you, if you. Uh, uh, let's get off of that. Okay, so it becomes part of the photo, but it's kind of like a layer, so you can always remove it. So if you go back, revert to original, it'll, it'll take care of it. So again, I'm going to show you how to get there. You click edit on the photo, and then you come up here and click on the ellipsis, and it's called markup. And by the way, that works on the phone and the iPad. And that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna take a quick little break now for about 10 minutes. Oh, wait, let's answer the questions first. Uh, oh yeah, so Bob points out on these programs, you're actually buying these programs rather than do a monthly subscription. Seems to be a lot of the people are going to monthly subscriptions these days. Uh, <laughs> All right.
Oh, I get it. No, you, <laughs> never mind. You guys were having a dialogue back and forth. I see that. Um, so any questions on, because we're going to go to iOS after the break. Any questions on here on the Mac on doing photos? Um, I do want to point out one thing that I think is important. So when you're, you know, you're, you're going to want to make projects. You're going to want to make books. In fact, I think as we get into like November, I'm going to have a whole class on making books and things like that. But you can, everybody always wants to know, how can I arrange my photos? Well, you can't arrange your photos until you create an album from your photos. So for instance, if I go here to my photos and I want to select, let's just say I'm going to select these photos. I have selected them now. In photos, I cannot change their arrangement because it is chronologically sorted, okay? So if I want to make an album, I'll highlight all these photos. Then I go up and say file. Don't do a smart album. Just say do a new album with selection. And then I'm just going to call this class test. I have created this new album. Now, when I click on this album, I can easily put photos in any spot I want. Now, any editing I do to the photo, remember I edited this photo. Oops, why did that click up? That's weird. Huh. I'm clicking on, oh, I know what it is. I got to click out. There's a little bit of a problem in photos. There it is. So. If I remove this in one photo, it removes them in it all. But what I did is I took that out. So any adjustments you make, uh, let's kind of talk about what, how albums work. You have your photos. Your photos is your shoebox with all your photos in it. All the photos are there. When I create an album, I am not duplicating those photos. I'm simply pointing to the photo in the shoebox. So therefore, if I go in and crop a photo in an album, or I adjust it, or whatever I do to it, when I do it either in photos or in an album, it does it everywhere that photo is, and your photos are not duplicated. So you could have one photo in 10 different albums, and it is not duplicated. It's not taking up any more room. Okay, Don, you have a question? Go ahead, you're unmuted, go ahead. Yeah, two questions. One, I can't get the menu that sh uh, allows me to type in a comment or a question, and I'm not sure how Are that went. About, oh, for here, so you, want to, you tap the chat button. Chat is a pop out in Zoom. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So the other question is, how does this compare with a program like Pixelmator? Um, well, Pixelmator is able to, if I go in and edit a photo, for instance, if I take uh, this photo from Korea, and I click edit, Pixelmator is an option right here, Pixelmator Pro. Wow. So you can, so all of these programs can be done standalone. In other words, you bring the photo into that program and do it, or you can do it within photos. And what that does is, is that photos is pretty much your catalog and your library. And then you're just going out to Pixelmator Pro here and doing it, which is an excellent, excellent program. I'm just not very good at it and I'm not that, you know, it's funny. I do a ton of photos and they just don't spend the time manipulating them that much. But yeah, Pixelmator Pro, any of the other big ones out there. I personally stay away from photo, Photoshop and Lightroom because I've never, I've never learned them. They're very good programs and they can do the same interactivity like this. So good question. Another question. I, I take my photos out to edit them with an external program so I can then put them into an email or a, or a um, I, uh, like Pixelmator, you mean? Yeah, but I, how do I copy directly from photos to uh, text? So you don't need to copy them. So basically, photos is your, your library. And then when I fire up something like Pixelmator Pro, I'm adjusting the photo using all the tools of Pixelmator Pro. And then my photo is stored back in photos because once it's in photos, I can do anything I want with photos. I can attach it to an email. I can text message it. I can airdrop it. I can set up a shared folder, whatever I want to do. 
Oh, okay. You do that right from photos. Yes. Yeah. Still- and those are called extensions. And when you install the program, it now it then becomes available in your extensions. And if I click on the ellipsis here and I go down here, I can say manage my extensions. And these are all the ones I have added. Now it's gone out in my computer and looked for programs that have what's called extensibility or this extensions. And if I deselect them, then they're not going to be in my menu when I do the edit is all. But I choose to have them all there. In fact, I have an older version of Aurora HDR, and I don't show it here because I want to use the newest one. Okay, how did you get these? Can. Oh, uh, go ahead, go ahead, John. Yeah, how, how did you get the extensions menu? Where did you click them? So if I go to the ellipsis, where they normally are hidden and I come down to manage. But then the other thing is, look at this, I go to the app store and this is going to tell me what programs are available for that. These are all, these are all work in conjunction with photos and they have extensibility like Aurora HDR. But remember like Luminar and, and some of that stuff is not in the app store. So even though you install the program separately, Actually, Luminar may be in there, but um, since you install them separately, they still have this extensibility ability. Oh, so Ken, what is ex- what is an extension? I mean, I think that's kind of a basic question for us that we're trying to figure out as yeah, opposed so to an another application. It's an it, it basically allows a program to utilize the cataloging and all the other features of photos. So you don't have to export your photo out of photos and then go fire up a program and then bring it back into photos and all that. It actually works. You're, you're using photos, even though photos has some of these built in features, you you can still use those, but you're essentially using photos as your cataloging of your photos. And then when you go to, HDR or one of these other programs within photos, it still puts it back in photos, but it's using the full version of that uh, photos pro the the photo enhancement program again, like haze removal, Pixelmator Pro, all of these, all of these, it's really opening up the program, but keeping the photo within photos because then you can always go back to original and things like that. Okay, so thank that, you, because I think it's hard to trying explain. to figure out. Sense. Yeah. Pardon, go ahead. So does that, anybody, if that, please ask me to clarify if that doesn't make sense how that works, because it's, it's critical. And it's the beauty of why photos is so much better than the old iPhoto was. And it's amazing that Apple, because Apple's concern is always about security and to allow these programs to do what they do uh, is, is fantastic because now you don't have a downside to just being stuck with doing what photos can do. Um, how does one get a photo? Yeah. From, hang on, there's a question here from Bert. Uh, so how does one get a photo to appear on both MacBook Pro and iPad? Well, that all comes into play with uh, iCloud Library and PhotoStream which if we get chance at the end, Bert, ask me that when we, once we've done the editing type stuff, I'll see if we can do that. So somebody else had a question there, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to um, ask about extensions. Isn't that the same as an app on the iPhone? Yes, but the iPhone uses extensions too, which we're gonna go into a bit. Okay. So, but yes, and it, so it really is a way of activating non-Apple apps on our device and still use our cataloging of photos as a program. Because we know photos goes up to the cloud, you can make everything sync and everything like that. So it's really, it really is a huge tool. And I, I kind of, I'm glad somebody asked me to go into the details of it because there is a ton going on there and it just is so simple here. So let's take a break until about 10, 25. Remember, if you have an iOS device, don't, uh, don't take it with you if you don't want us to hear or see everything that's going on. And remember, filling your water bottle from the fridge will sound just like other things.
All right, and ask any questions you want. Yes, Don again. I'm still trying to find extensions menu on, in photos. Oh, say find, grab a photo. Uh -huh. And click edit. And then click the three dot ellipsis. And then come down to manage. Okay, I'm in it. Oh, okay. And then when it says manage, it will only do the apps that you have currently loaded on your computer. Okay, let's see. I click manage. I don't see. Do you have, look at my window. Does it look like this? Should say extensions? Nope. What version of the operating system are you running? Oh, the, the latest. Um... Catalina? No, no, not, not, not Catalina, the, the one before that. What, so you don't even have markup shown oh, there? Mojave. You don't even have markup shown? Yeah, mark. Yeah, well, mark. yeah, markup is shown. And nothing else. Well, you said there was nothing there, so I was taking you literally. I click on manage at the bottom of that drop down. Are you looking at my screen? No, I was looking at my screen. Okay, so let's close this. So you go to the ellipsis and come on down and click manage. Are you with me? Okay, let me let me do that. Um, click edit, then click the three dots, the ellipsis, and click manage. Somehow I got out of edit now. I'll cancel. Let me get a cancel there. Okay, I'm in. Manage. Okay, I'm in manage, but did I don't. You click, did you click up. manage? Did you click manage? Yes. Okay, did you get a screen like this? No. Nothing like this? No. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Look, I'm, I got too many windows open here. Let me. Okay, well, wait a minute. All right, it's, it's just, it's down in another spot in my screen here. Yeah, okay. So I've got, a, I've got other editors that I can, um, you know. And if you check mark them, then they show up in the menu. Doesn't mean you have to use them, but they show up in your menu. So say I want to get um, messages. Well, messages is not how you edit photos. I want to send a photo to somebody in a well, message. Well, that has nothing to do with this. This is editing. Yeah, well, so I know. You, so over here where it says photo editing, the other one is the share menu, which should all be active anyway. But that has nothing to do with editing. We're talking about editing. So that's why if you look at my screen on the left-hand side here, that's what photos editing is. Yeah, well, I don't have a question about editing. I have a question how to get the photo out. Well, that's then you just and put it somewhere else. All you do is you go up here to the little share box. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Click the share box, and there's all the ways you can share it. Okay. Same way I do it on my phone. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. Never realized it was there. Okay, thanks. Yep. Well, and you can go up here, file, and go to share here also. But yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Um, yes. Um, Ken, this is Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. I have Hi, Sierra. I don't have that manage icon. Is that why? Yeah, I think so. And we should probably, what, what, what's the vintage of your computer? 2010. Uh, and also get there via system extensions. Yeah, what, Bob, what? You can also get there via opening system extensions. Not through photos though, right? Oh, I'm saying, you can open up system prefs, then extensions, and you can get to that same uh, 
dialogue box that you've been showing. Oh, but not for Cheryl. No, that she should be able to get to it on her system. Yeah, Cheryl, fire up uh, system preferences from the Apple logo. I did. Oh, uh, yes. Uh huh. And do you have system extensions there? It's called extensions, actually. Yes, I do. And it says photo editing, markup. Yeah. There you go. So if you click on that, do you have some choices there? And I have markup, which I had on the um, original. Right. So markup is Apple's built in one, which means you probably have not installed any aftermarket ones. Right. Exactly. Oh, okay. So. And if so, they would show up there. Thanks, Bob, for that tip. Okay. Thank and you. And this is, again, the exact same. That's the window we, we went to when we hit it from the ellipsis. Actually, Ken, I didn't know you could get there using that manage choice. That was a new item to me today. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, and as you can see, it takes you exactly to the same spot. And actually, right. I think the App Store one is kind of nice, too, because then you see what's there. But remember, there's more than the App Store. There's more stuff than's in the App Store. In fact, I'm going to look. Uh, Lynn, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. I have literally thousands and thousands of pictures. And I, a lot of them I want to totally get rid of. I go through the main menu on photos to get rid of them. Totally. Let's wait until everybody comes back and we can, well, let's ask this question then. How's that? That's just fine. Thank you. Because it's a good question. Yeah, so Luminar is in the App Store, or you can buy it directly from. Photo Lemur, is that one you turned me on to a long time ago, Bob? Yes. I still use it. Oh, I do too. I just, most of my editing I do when I'm when I'm remote is on my laptop, so I don't have it on here. So I'm going to... Only drawback it has is you have to have an internet connection. Yeah, and you know, I actually like two, two better than three. Because you could control more. Hmm. It's all one word. Oh, well, you got it. Turn on my coffee. It is just to turn on the water, but I think water. Trying to see if I can sign into my account, but. If you have any questions, feel free to speak up. Yeah, Ken, it's Randy. On applications, how do you add printing? I, I know applications extensions is for third party, but I do have an HP Smart, which I think would be a third party application. How do I, in extensions, add printing capabilities or functionality when it's not available, like, like photos. If I want to print from photos, I actually have to go a roundabout way to do it. What, what do you mean you have to go a roundabout way? I don't understand. Well, I, if, if I'm on my iMac, I can just uh, take the photo, go up to file print. So right. it's a done deal. But on phone, iPhone, and tablet, how do I add those extensions in? No, you don't. You simply um, use the print command. It's not now. Yeah, that's not in any part of photos. That's part of the system. 
Yeah. So, um, is your printer capable of uh, air print? Can you print other things from your iPhone? Oh, yes, yes, I, uh, yes, I can for both the iPhone and the uh, tablet. <clears throat> then you should be able to. Um, then you should just be able to print from photos. There's no extension needed. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. You bet. Any other, oh, uh, let's see, somebody has a question up. Barbara, go ahead. Yeah, I don't really understand this about extensions. What is an extension and what do they do? Uh, so an extension is, allows photos to go in and use these other programs. Okay. Or in a more general sense, it allows one program to use another program. It's, it's not just confined to photos. Right. So it's those enhancement programs that, uh, but again, photos is cataloging it, and then it just goes in and opens into these other programs. Okay. Thanks. Ken, Pixelmator is one of the choices that showed up in your list, isn't it? Correct. Pixelmator Pro. Pro. Oh, okay. I do not have Pixelmator Pro. Just yeah, I, I, the regular one might, but I'm not sure. No, it's not showing up. That's what I was going to ask you. Okay. Is why isn't it showing up? And yeah, I do not have Pixelmator Pro. Yeah, Pixelmator Pro is, is Mine was so, free, I so much more than, than the uh, original one. Yeah. There it is. Any other questions? Okay, we'll get started in just a minute. I'm gonna get Photo Lemur downloaded here. Ken, I have a question. Go ahead. In a previous uh, session, you mentioned touch retouch. Do you no longer uh, recommend that? That's actually on the iOS device. Okay, thank you. Good question, though, and we're going to go over that. All righty, so let's go ahead and I'm going to stop the share of the screen and I'm going to share from.
All right, so now we're gonna go in on the iPad to photos. And we'll pick some of the same photos. Where are those last imports? There we go. So if we go into photos, actually here's one I hadn't done earlier. So, oh man. <laughs> My edit screen showing up or not showing up on the screen? Ah, there seeing we an old car. Yeah, so, the, so here's the deal. So on your device, on your iOS device, it will not show me the original menu that's on the screen. I see it on mine. So at the top, you have the share uh, box, the favorites, the trash can, and then the edit. So when I tap the edit, we get this. So now I have my, com my edit commands. So if you remember on the Mac, across the top, you had adjust, filter, and crop, right? So those are over here on the left, adjust, filter, and crop. And then on the right-hand side are some of our other adjustments. And in the upper right corner here, we miraculously have also the ellipsis. And so that ellipsis gets us into the same programs, or uh, excuse me, the iOS versions of some of those programs like Pixelmator, not Pixelmator Pro, retouch, retouch, things like that. And then of course, markup. And again, that's the ellipsis up in the top. We go down here, these are the equivalent of the built-in controls that you got on the Mac. And so if we go down one, there's the, the magic wand, the auto, and you can see it brightened it up a little bit. I can turn it off. But what's really neat is you'll notice now I have a scale over here. So I can slide along that scale and you can see how that's kind of changing the effect of it. Even though it went auto, I still have a scale. And of course, right where the dot is, is what it recommended for that. So then the next one is, if I tap that, is exposure. So I can adjust my exposure up and down. Again, go to extremes and then bring it back and see what you like. Okay. Uh, next one is brilliance. You know, these are a little bit of a nuances and there's some adjustments there. So I'll just go ahead and take it back to square. And then here's highlights. Shadows. Now shadows, remember that was really, you'll notice here I can bring those trees out a little bit or look on the porch or make the door a little bit brighter. So different things like that. So these are very equivalent to what you have on the iOS, I'm sorry, on the Mac. Now here I can boost, I can reduce or enhance the saturation, that's always color, that's color enhancement, okay. Next one is vibrance, you know, and a lot of these tie together, so that does do some color boosting, but it brings out the, the peakier tones. Warmth, you know, so a warm picture is more yellowish, bronzish, whereas a cool picture is more bluish and stark. See how that brought the blues out? Or if you go warm and soft, warm is more towards skin tones. So the tint, sharpness, definition, noise reduction. Now noise reduction is a little bit similar to that haze removal you have in there and you can sharpen it up a little bit. And the last one is vignette and that just gives you that effect. And again, that's just like a filter that kind of comes in around it. It's kind of like uh, in the old days, you used to put Vaseline around the edge of the lens to give you kind of a vignette. So we'll hit done on that. And I'm going to go to the other side here. I'll go back to edit. So here's cropping. So now my cropping, I have a scale on the side and that gives me that getting the horizon correct. And it will try to do it automatically. This is the flip. 
I'm sorry, this is a perspective and it's actually pretty interesting. This will correct for a different lens type aberration. And then this is the other type. It skews it. Okay. And then filters are the same that we've seen before. Oh, I should say when we're in the crop mode, you'll notice across the top here, you have this. If I tap that, that is now got the aspect ratios that you're looking for. So you can set it freeform, original, very similar to how we have crop on the Mac. And that's again, just this little button right here, tap. Okay, so I'm gonna, also then I go here to, uh, once we're in crop mode, we are in crop mode. So I have the thing where we can flip it like we did before you decide to flip it and then there's rotate one thing you're missing though that came built in with the Mac was the ability to kind of uh, do some uh, do some adjustments to the picture for uh, like this one for instance let's go ahead and edit this because we know actually let's go back to this let's go to the sailboat one because that was pretty stark I'll hit edit and now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to hit touch retouch is a program to do that. So now that fires it up and I'm going to just say object removal. I tap on object removal right down here and I'm going to now paint my finger right over that, ob that line and say go. That got rid of it. Let's do the buoy. Go. Buoy's gone. We'll do the, the, the buoy was there. We'll do this one right here. Go. Done. So this just like snap peel. Actually, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this piece of this little hardware here. See what happens. Got rid of that piece of hardware right there. So here's the undo button. You can see that it's there. Undo, undo, undo. Boom, undo again. And then the buoy, there's the buoy. Well, let's remove the buoy. And are you doing this on your Mac or on your iPad? I'm doing this on my iPad. Oh, okay. So that's the retouch app. Yeah, retouch it's called app. it's called retouch. Oh, retouch. So I find that it works almost as well as Snap Heal. Now there's some other. I don't. I don't have it loaded on this iPad. There's full of Affinity Photos and many of the different things. Now the interesting thing is, is that you can do some things on the iPad with the pencil rather than your finger that make it even better than doing it the other way. So yeah. here, so here's the difference with those. There's they're on and removed. So I'm using this little indicator again. There's original. There's non-original. In fact, let's get rid of all those things. Hang on. Redo. Ken, retouch okay. is an app you have to purchase. Correct. Thank so you. here's so here's the photo fixed, and here was original. Pretty amazing on an iOS device. Now I can go back in here and let's do some color adjustments on this. So I'm going to look at saturation here. So I made San Francisco Bay look a little bluer than it usually is. So there we'll go with a little bit of vibrance. Now with affinity for the iPad, I could redo and get that skylight to really pop the sky to pop more blue and do more of a haze remove kind of thing. But we're just kind of showing you the basics here. So again, that's photos on the iPad. So let's see any other questions you mentioned touch retouch. Oh yeah. Let's go to, uh, let me see how much retouch is.
obviously once you own it, it's hard to know what the price is. So I just go to Safari and retouch looks like it's a dollar night. Touch retouch is a dollar ninety nine. Yeah, a dollar ninety nine. So that's a heck of a deal. I'll show you. I'll show you on in Safari so you can see what it is. Uh, and it could be a dollar eighty four. Yeah, but that I can't really talk about anymore. Oh. Because well, actually, bring good point. So let's let's do that. So, so if you see here, here's touch, retouch. So that's what it looks like right there. So, okay, so yeah, you mentioned, so we used to get uh, App Store discounts. And by the way, my iPad is on your screen, right? Yes. Okay, good, because I'm, I'm usually using it as a monitor. So anyway, uh, when iTunes gift cards used to go on sale for 15% off, I used to, I would send out an email to everyone. Well, it's been a good six months since there's been any discounts. Well, Apple now, in fact, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, App store iTunes gift cards, what they're doing and I was really surprised since I hadn't done it for a while. They have changed it now to be the gift cards, the newest gift card is the same. Apple launch, here it is. Apple launches new gift card for app everywhere. And so in other words, it used to be if you bought an Apple gift card that was good in the, sto in the store or online for Apple hardware products or software products. Well, actually, excuse me, Apple hardware products. Now, and then the iTunes gift card was good for the App Store, for your iCloud account and everything else. Well, it turns out it looks like this card is now for both. And since it does do, let you buy hardware, uh, I have a feeling that we will no longer, my feeling is we will no longer see the 15% discount on cards because that would be a great thing to have it. So if any of you have stored up iTunes gift cards, there's a good chance you may be able to redeem them for Apple products. And if you got them at 15% off, you can send me a cut if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's a, uh, that's that's a new thing, and that just uh, it broke yesterday. Yesterday or day before is when I read that. So that's uh, that's new. So again, back to iOS device and photos. Um, you know, uh, let's see. Here's an. We'll go back to our shadows picture. Actually, this is one that might be good for shadows. So I'll click edit. And I'll go on down here and go to shadows and I'll try bring the homes in front out a little brighter so you can see that. Frankly, I don't think it enhances the photo the way it should because I like to have that a little more subtle and bring out more of the stuff that's going on in the sky. That's actually a sunset from my backyard about a week ago. So. So there, again, there's tons of built-in ones. When you go to the ellipsis, there are, there's Afterlight, Obscura, Procram, Retouch, good old Pixelmator. Pixelmator, I am just not that good at, but what's really neat is Pixelmator has some built-in ones. And look at this, I can do different adjustments with that. It's called, a, they call that light leak. So uh, I can go here and let's look at some of their other stuff. Nebula, kind of weird. You know, I can do different things, make it really spooky. I just don't like to make my photos look too weird. Let's go to uh, 
oh, actually, there's a bokeh effect. Oh, that's interesting. So this is all within Pixelmator. Focus. So there it's kind of a bokeh effect. You can see how I, the, the photo, the, the things up close are less focus, more focus. I adjust the slider in and out, more focus, less focus. So it's dulling the, it's uh, basically blurring out the foreground, kind of a reverse bokeh. And that's all in the Pixelmator app that's in here. The miniaturized doesn't work too well. But Pixelmator is really cool. There's lots of other ones. I'll revert back to original. And again, I'll hit edit. Go up to here. Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to look at Afterlight. I don't mess with these on my iPad very much. But Afterlight allows me to do some different things. You'll notice they have some built-in effects in there. And then I can adjust how much of the I want to use of the effect. Right there. That one was called an afterlight. And there's a whole bunch of those. Oh, I don't know if there's a man. Let me see if there's a manage on this one. Yeah, so let's go edit actions. And you can see the only one I have there currently that I can add is markup, but that's interesting that I didn't have markup. Let's see. Yeah, markup's there now. And again, markup is built in. That's the one that'll allow you to do the different uh, overlays with text or whatever. Now, in the more in the more button here, when I'm in this edit, when I click more, that shows the ones I have. So it won't take me automatically to the App Store. But if we go to the App Store, and I just do a search for if we go to apps, and if I go to photos, there used to be a whole, top categories. Oh, that's interesting. So maybe I'll just do photos in the search here. Okay, uh, there's how to do a photo book. Oh gosh, the old photo booth. We haven't used photo booth in a long time. Well, oh, that's interesting. It used to go, let's check apps. Top, oh, here we go. Top categories, photo and videos. So if I tap that, and these are, editor's choice are also very, very good. And there you can edit in raw if you want, if you're shooting with another uh, camera. And then let me look for, oh, that's weird. They used to show extensibility in here. Apps we love, so Lightroom, Photomap, a Travel Tracker. Let me look for one thing, Affinity. Oh, it's, oh, there it is, Affinity Photo. So if you look at this, this is Affinity Photo. And remember I had haze removal and everything else for the, uh, for the Mac. There's all these things it can do. It's just amazing what you can do on the iPad with Affinity Photo. And the nice thing is, is if, it's, if your iPad supports pencil, you can go in and do just some amazing things. Look at, is that showing on your guys' screen or not? Yes. Okay, let me go back to the beginning. This is a little 30 second video.
affinity photo is fantastic. I actually have it on my iPad Pro. I don't have it on my mini, which I'm showing from right now. Okay. All right, so that's it. And I should let me look and see how much affinity. Affinity photo on the iPad. Oh, it took me to the App Store. I want Safari. Nineteen ninety nine, and it's just a powerhouse. And by the way, you do have the Affinity Designer, which is uh, if you're doing uh, newsletters and things like that, and graphics. It's fantastic, and it's uh, Affinity Photo. I believe is Serif Labs, if I'm not, or Serif Labs. Okay, so uh, let's talk. So there were some questions about how to share photos. So let's show you that on an iOS device here. Let's go back to photos. And these aren't my photos, but this is one of the ones I found here um, online that was the comment. So if you go, does the share box doesn't show up top. So there is a share box up top that is a little box with a uh, icon coming out of it. Does that now show on the screen? Does it show my choices? No. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not going to let us do that because of the way it displays on Zoom. So basically, the share box at the top, you click on it and you have multiple choices, whether to send it by text or by um, uh, email or into a shared, shared library. And what I'll do is I'm going to go back and go to my screen on the computer and show you a shared library because this is another great feature of photos. So the first thing you want to do is I'm back in photos on my Mac. Let me get back into Zoom on my iPad so I can make sure I'm on. There we go. Great. So I'm going to share, need to share my screen. All right, screen is back. So if we go up to photos and preferences, in general, oh, you know what? That's weird. Uh, it's not my system library. OK, so let me do this quick little change for you. I'm going to quit photos for a second, and I will come back in and open my system library in photos. I have a special photos library I was using just for class, but I will get into my system library, choose library. Ken, did you say you're back on your Mac, not on your... Um... I'm back on the Mac because it was hard to, just, to show these things on what happens is when you display the uh, iPad, it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't show some of the menus. Yeah. So. Same things are available on the iPad. For sharing and stuff, yes. Yeah, thanks. Great. Okay, so if I'm gonna go up to photo preferences on the Mac, photos preferences, I wanna make sure I turn on shared albums. Now let's say you it back. Let's say back in time when we used to go to events, and let's say there were three or four of you that were at an event, and you were taking photos. Um, you could create a shared album. It goes up on the cloud, and then you can invite other people to that shared album. And the beauty of that shared album is they can add photos to it. If you allow them to, they can add photos to it. So in on your computer. Even though you don't have, a, like I, for instance, do not have iCloud Photos on because this library is, is too big. Um, so even with it off, you can still share albums up to the cloud. And 
other people can collaborate on the album with you. And then on the left hand side, your shared albums will show up. And There they are, right under here under shared albums. So these are albums I've shared or albums I've shared with somebody else. This was a memorial we did for somebody. And so a friend of mine uploaded some of the albums he had of pictures of him and uh, other people can add albums. Like I did a shared album from Austria, the two guys I was traveling with. So anyway, a shared album allows people to collaborate. It sits up on the cloud and anyone can view them. And for instance, if I go and I control click on this album, oops, let's see here, shared album. So here I click up in this little information here. Here's the people I've shared it with. Subscribers can post. Oh, and then the best thing is if they're that's off they're on an Apple device, you can make it a public website. So if I make it a public website, this is a link anyone can go to. And you can give that to to somebody and they can do it on an Android. So let's go visit that in Safari. That shared album with that link. no password. So these are all the Austrian album and anybody can get into this link. If you allow them, they can download the photos and do things like that. So those are all boring shots from early in the Austria trip. So anyway, back to that, going back to photos again. You create a shared album. So what you can do is you can take any album you have. So let's see here. Uh, just find a small little album. So that's only 41 photos. So what I can do is I can select all those photos and I can create, oh, wait a minute here. Uh-oh, they changed how to do it. Is it under export now? No, because no. that, that's interesting. Oh, here it is. It's under share. Excuse me. So if I went to this Whistler album, I'd go to shared albums, which means it's probably also over here under this share. Yeah. So when I click on shared album, I can add it to an existing shared album or create a new shared album. And I can put comments on it. So if I create a new shared album, I can call the name, uh, this was what, Whistler. And then I would invite people from my address book by clicking the plus. I can go find them in my address book or simply just put their names in here, put comments and create, and then it's done. And again, if I go back to, I'm not put, I'm not creating a new shared album, but if I go back to my shared albums, like the Austria album, once the album is created, I go up here and I can invite people, or if I click and make it public, I give people just that link. And then you can decide to have notifications, like it'll tell you if someone comments or does it. This does not go against your iCloud storage space. And this is a great way to not just collaborate, but a great way to share your photos with someone else, whether they're on a PC, on a Mac, an Android, or an iPhone. 
and you can share the album. But you do have to make it for non-Apple people. You have to select public website. And then this is the link. And this link will never change. That stays what it is. And you can, you can determine whether people that, quote, subscribe, those that you've invited, can post pictures or not post pictures. So you can keep it private and then share it with people with their email address, or you can make it public and pretty much share it with anybody. And obviously anybody that would have that link would be able to see it. Any questions on shared albums? Because they're fantastic. And I, I just, I don't see people use it enough. And it is great. You know, I'm, I know that for Pete Losey's wedding, a bunch of us, he did a shared album and we all could throw our pictures up to it. And then they have them from everybody's cameras that are around. So uh, another thing is what's incredible is the search capabilities in both the iOS and the other. So let me see if it works this way. Show me my pictures of cars. So it just went into my library. I have never told it these are cars, but it went into my library and found all 3,361 pictures of cars. And that can be just done with the search here also on your iOS device or with Siri. There's 3,381. So I've got 20 more that it found by searching this way. Okay. But I could even go and say, show me pictures of wheels. And there's, well. 83 changed yeah okay well that's weird though i guess so like this one i don't see too many wheels but if i go on down here there's going to be oh it might be within that album let's see this show me my pictures of wheels there we go so it went i was i was in the i was further going down the lines we have show me pictures of food So there, oh, it thinks Mesa Arch is food. That's kind of funny. But uh, again, the computer is, it thinks that railing on the cruise ship is food. And I guess it's maybe the jelly on the top. But anyway, uh, it does a pretty darn good job of figuring out different things. You can obviously show it. Um, show me pictures from Austria. And it went in and found all my pictures from Austria. So if you've told the people there's faces, you could tell it to show pictures of faces. So that's with Siri or the search box right here. You can also say, show me all my photos from 2017. And there it is, all my photos from 2017. So, and this is Siri on the Mac. Obviously you can do it with Siri on the other device. Uh, let's see, I could also say, let's try a compound search. Uh, let's see here. Show me my pictures of cars from 2017. Yeah, see there's 576 matches. So. I am, I never put cars in on all of these or anything, but they're there. So that was the, uh, the eclipse trip I took in 2017 is what that is. So, and there was Monterey, the Pebble Beach concourse. So uh, just use the search and you can find virtually anything. You can do albums and when you do albums, so if you want to make a project like a slideshow or a book, you have to create an album first, then you put the things in the order you want, and then you turn them into a project. So, and, yes, and, go ahead. Yeah, in your pictures of Austria, did you have to designate that when you took the picture that you're in Austria? No, because it was all done on my iPhone, and the iPhone will always take the location for you if you have location off. That's an option you have to put on, though. It's on by default unless you've disabled it. Where is it? 
It's in uh, your location settings and privacy on your phone. Oh, okay. And it should do it. And then, of course, like, let's say I go to this Austria photo right here. And then if I hit this little eye, you'll see in this tier, it has pinpointed it on the map. So when I'm out, like when I was at Machu Picchu, when I was in Cambodia and Thailand, I have my big camera with me. So what I make sure I do, even if I'm only shooting with my big camera, which is less and less, I make sure I take one photo at least with my iPhone because it both date stamps and location stamps it. So I always know exactly where that point was. Oh yeah, good point. And it, it makes a huge difference that way. And even if you've got your phone on, um, you're not using data or anything, if you still take the photo, it will do that. Let's say you're on a cruise and there's 10 ports of call. Well, when you get back and you're processing your photos, they all look the same. Well, if you've taken an iPhone photo, it really will stamp it for you and you can see right here and i can just click on that map and zoom out zoom in that was you know in lack in at zur's ski area and then in the picture it even shows two of the, the two guys i was skiing with so this one like here this was sun valley this was uh, a couple of weeks later in sun valley and it just location stamps it here was All right. the airport in uh, CM Rip. All right, got a couple questions on the board here. Let's see. Uh, can you just saturation and other things to just part of the photo, uh, such as on my shirt only? You in some of the device, some of the ones, some of the photo programs you can, and especially ones for the iPad, you can do specific areas. But one thing you can do in most of these is you can say, okay, let's just make blue brighter or duller on that. So that was a good question, Barb. And yes, or Barbara, you can, you can do that. When I looked at touch and retouch on my Mac, the App Store listed for $14.99 for the Mac. Oh, I didn't know they had touch retouch for the Mac. So that's good. Uh, Christine, uh, if you have photo editing stations on your laptop or desktop, Will it not be shared? So actually, yeah. So the question is, is um, if you have an app on the iPad, does it work on the Mac and vice versa? Currently it doesn't, but that's coming with the new hardware and things like that. But right now, just like everything else, they're separate. Photos for the iPad and iOS device is different than photos for the computer. That same thing applies to these extension apps. And the reason being is, is that they do spend a lot of work going from one to the other. But as Apple is changing things now and with the new chip that is coming in the fall where they're actually taking the chip from the iPad and the iPhone and gonna be starting making Macs with it, you will probably be able to see a little bit of that cross-pollination and um, go from there. But generally speaking, apps for the iOS devices are less costly than the same app for the Mac, but they're not totally interchangeable. So and let me ask this. Go ahead. Um, um, so, but, so if I use it on my iPad to edit photos while on a trip, will, and photos get shared with your other devices, will that um, edited photo be uh, therefore edited onto my MacBook and other devices? So the edits, yes. So, and that's a great question. So if we think about this, what you're doing is, let's just, the easiest way to visualize this, let's apply it to cropping because that's something we can all visualize very, in a, in a linear way. So let's say you have three people in a photo and you crop one person out and you've done that on your iPad. If you're using iCloud library where your, your photos and everything sync with one another, then you go to your Mac and that person would be cropped out on that photo on your Mac but you then still could also revert to original and maintain that person back into it. So that's, the, that's what happens with these, these photo extensions is they're more or less putting another layer over the photo or creating a crop, so to speak, and then therefore it goes back and it's not just cropping, it's color correction and stuff. Now, the one thing is though is once it's done it, it's put it on the photo and you can always remove it on the other device, but you can't necessarily get it back 
if that particular program is not on that other device. So there's a little hiccup in that, but you can always revert to it. But otherwise it shows it. And when you go to export a photo, and I will point this out, this applies really only to the Mac. But if I take this photo, let's say this photo of uh, up in Glacier, if I go and I say export, when I go to export, I have the option to export the photo as edited or an unmodified version of the photo. In fact, for most of the photos I worked on today for the class, I had already manipulated those photos. So I had to export them as an unmodified photo and bring them into that other test library that I use. So therefore I would be able to do things like the haze removal and things, because it's like this photo already has had haze removal done on it because it really clears this up. So that's a, that's a good question. And the apps do, even though they're the, sometimes they're the exact same name, there are some features on one and not on the other and vice versa. So, uh, let's see. And okay, go ahead. Would it not be prudent if you thought you wanted to go back and forth to just keep your original, make a copy and do your edits on your copy the way we used to before you could retrieve um, after you had done edits? Um, there's, you don't need to, because you can always revert to original. Now, I sometimes, let's think about this, many times if I'm doing a document and I'm, I'm doing a newsletter or something and I may not like this, the, I go, well, let's go down this road and try this. And then I go, ah, oh, I want to revert back to what it was. I save a copy of it along the way. You don't have to because you can always revert to original, but you can do that. The only reason I don't encourage it is all of us have too many duplicates as it is. And generally speaking, it'll be a different image with that number. And uh, yeah, it can be done if you're really, yeah, it, it can be, but it's because it can go to original, you don't necessarily need to. Kimberly, did that answer it for you? Yeah, it's just another way. And uh, I realize you're creating a lot of excess um, stuff for your computer, but in some cases. Yeah, I, agree. I, don't, I don't disagree. And there are times when I've done it, but it's very rare and I try to keep to a minimum because I have such a bloody large library as it is. Yeah. But the other thing is, is that when you're doing these tweaks, remember, you have multiple levels of undo. In other words, I could make a hundred changes on a photo and by simply going undo, 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 I can always go back to a certain spot. So don't be afraid to experiment. And let's say you go in and you make 12 changes. Well, remember, you can do undo those 12 changes and get it back to where you were when you, before you embarked on this other little test, you know, so you have multiple levels of undo, so. Oh, so that's a new. No, I've we've had multiple levels of undo for a long time, but when you click done, your choice is when you click done on the photo, like if I go into this photo and I click edit and I make some changes, like let's just do some weird, weird things. I'll just crop it. You know, am I in my good library now doing this? Okay, well, no problem. So I'm doing that. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I'm going to say, oh, I want it to look like this and like that, you know, I mean, how garbage does that look? So, but I can now get my command Z or edit undo. Okay. So now watch this command Z, command Z, command Z. Uh oh. Uh oh. So my crops didn't undo. I'm screwed. So that's, so, uh, no, go back to the original over well, here. I don't, but the original was modified. Oh, because this already, I had already cropped it and everything. So I did go back to original. So let's just, while we're at it, let's just do a haze removal on this.
And when I'm doing the things with the extensions like that, you'll notice in the upper right, my choice is cancel or save. I can always see what it's doing and then hit cancel or save if I want. So uh, let's look at other questions while that's doing it. How does one access the library on the iPad? MacBook always features this. Uh, the photos library in the iPad is simply just or the the photos icon is the photos library. Now on your Mac, you can have multiple libraries on your iOS device. You can't, and it's not saying you should have multiple libraries. Okay. So here's the before and the after it takes a minute for it to, yeah, you know what, one, this one may have already been imported uh, adjusted because I think I had adjusted this before. So come on, computer catch up. Let's see, if I purchase some of the extensions, will they transfer to your device? Yeah, we did that. Don't forget deleting hundreds of photos. Then, okay. All right, here we go. So yeah, you'll notice in the sky and of course the mountains, the better see how haze removal did a good job here it was actually i was lucky it was a very clear day so there wasn't a lot of haze to remove but you can see it really helps okay so i'm going to cancel let me get out of that done all right so yeah that one needs work again so some reason it didn't revert after i changed so once i changed from one type of editing to the other it locked it in but I can always revert to original. But Kimberly, that would have been a perfect place to go ahead and do the, the duplicate if needed on that. So, um, so you can always trash your original after you see your result. Don't, don't trash your original because that's the only one you can revert. You can't always revert the duplicate. Ah, uh, I see. So if, in that case, you can make a couple, but just be, be cognizant of it and then just, you know, go from there. But it, it is, it's valid. So uh, Lynn, I think the whole deal is don't forget how about deleting hundreds of photos. So basically, and then there's a couple different ways. So on your computer, I can simply click and drag and you see I'm drawing this circle and that selects a, a whole bunch of photos. But I gotta tell you, if you have iCloud library on, we, we have to go because this is a huge, huge deal. I, I want to take everything away from photos and let's pretend like we're using contacts. So if you go to your contacts app and on your Mac, you create a new contact. Well, that contact goes up to the cloud and it shows up on all your iOS devices also or on your other Macs also. So you've created a new contact and it goes everywhere. Let's say somebody's phone number changes. Well, you go in and you change their phone number. It changes it everywhere. What happens if all of a sudden on your phone, you pull up your contacts and you decide to delete that one contact? What do you think happens? Anybody? You can unmute yourself. Nobody's willing. It what? It deletes everywhere. Exactly. And that's the important thing because it's not being backed up, so to speak. You're deleting it. So that's what's called syncing. And that's what happens in iCloud Library. Like if I went and I decided I don't want this picture, and this one isn't a great picture, but it might, this might massage up pretty well. If I'm on iCloud Library and I delete this picture, it will delete it everywhere and it will never ever have that picture again now admittedly it will go into a folder called uh recent uh uh oh gosh recently deleted and that recently deleted it will stay in there for 30 days but remember only delete a photo if you never ever want to see it again and in fact i used to say you know for instance out of focus photos are worthless well there's technology coming like this one with this hand. I mean, that was just, that was me walking and I accidentally did it. I have no problem deleting that photo. So I'll just simply delete it. Boom. Okay. 
So now it's in the recently deleted album. So now it's in a recently deleted album and it will actually go away in 29 days. I can decide to delete it right now if I want, recover it or delete it, but it just sits in recently deleted for 29 days. So you can save yourself from yourself. But I used to delete out of focus photos and there's some indications now that out of focus photos, there's an outside chance with, auto, with artificial intelligence, there might be some hope for those in the future. So uh, again, only delete it if you never ever want to see it again, because if you have iCloud library on, your photos are syncing everywhere. Just like that contact got deleted, your photo deletes everywhere. I just always have to give that little caveat. On the other hand, if you modify a photo, if you edit a photo or you crop a photo or do whatever, it's going to show up that same on all devices. <clears throat> but to mass delete photos, you can click and drag on this device. I'm going to show you how to do it on an iPhone because that's how a lot of us do it. So let me share my iPhone screen here in a second. And Okay, so here's photos on the iPhone. And if I just go to photos, so you can tap, you can up in the right, it says select. So if I tap select, now everywhere I touch, it's going to delete one by one by tapping. Okay. But if I want to do this, if I swipe my finger to the right and then slide down, I can select all of those photos. I'm simply sliding my finger across and then down rather than to tap each individual photo. Obviously I can hit cancel, but with select, I can do all of those. And then I can hit the trash can in the lower left. I can share it or do whatever I want. So I'll hit cancel so I don't do it. So. Let's see, other things. Let's see if there's any other questions, extensions, deleting hundreds of photos. Again, even if I delete it on my iPhone, it's going to go into a recently deleted and you'll have 30 days to recover it if needed. Uh, extensions, I think that's most of the questions. So feel free to raise your hand if you want, or uh, just unmute yourself and ask questions. We've got time, so. Um, anyone? Everybody yes, Ken. Go right ahead. I was wondering, on um, when you delete it or you change it on your iPhone, and it's you said it's on the cloud, it's gonna go to the Mac, where on your iPhone are you in, in system in systems preferences? Do you find that? Do I find what the setting? Yeah, it's, it's in settings yeah, under so what? I'll so. show you where, but nobody do it right now because if you change this, it makes big changes. But okay. so I'll show you on the Mac and I'll show you on the iPhone. But on the iPhone first, if you go into your iCloud settings, which is the first thing, so settings, iCloud then come down to iCloud and tap on iCloud. And in photos, you can see I do not have it on. But iCloud photos would sync all my libraries, which I have too many photos to do that. To, so I, I manage mine a little differently. I'm not saying my way is right, but I really encourage most people to use iCloud photos because it creates more room on your phone, et cetera. But, it, but everyone is case specific. So just because Ken says he doesn't use it doesn't mean you shouldn't. And just because I also say that you should probably all use it doesn't mean you should either. It's really case specific, but don't change it now because it makes dramatic changes. On the other hand, PhotoStream is the way that kind of iCloud photo library started out in the beginning. So what iCloud photo, photo stream I keep on because that will automatically send the photos to my Mac but not using it up on the cloud. So it's a upload 30 days. So they stay in my photo stream for 30 days. 
and the photo stream will take up to a thousand photos and it doesn't use any of my iCloud storage space, but it's a temporary holding. The only difference is it won't do videos where iCloud Photo Library will do videos. So the other setting in here is upload burst photos. And then the other one is those shared albums, which I told you about. And it's wonderful to be able to do a shared album. I don't really want my bursts. The bursts are where you hold down the, the setting, or the phone setting on there. So let's show you on the Mac, on Mac Photos, where that is. And it has to be the system library. So if you go to preferences, here's photo stream is checked and shared albums are checked. If you turn on iCloud Photos, you can download originals to your Mac if you have space or if you have some of the Macs that have a solid state drive, you can optimize the storage. And what that means is the full version of the photo goes up to the cloud, but a smaller thumbnail version stays on your Mac or your iPhone or your iPad. And that way they're all there, but it takes up a lot less room. And then if you go to have to look at a photo from long ago, you just tap it and it downloads it. So again, does that make, does that answer any questions? Uh, we'll on more, but that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Royce asks, got an email from Apple about the Apple card. Yes, it, and he asks, is it a bank credit card? Yes, it is, but it's not only for the Apple store. What it is, is you actually get 3% at the Apple store and it can be used anywhere. And his question is, can it be used at Amazon? And it says, do we get a 3% refund on everything else? No, so you only get 3% on Apple products and there's some other ones you do get a discount. For Amazon, I highly recommend the Amazon card because if you purchase from Amazon and it's the Prime card, if you have Prime, you will get, I, they either give you 50 or $75 when you first sign up. Let's check. I think you get, so you get 5% off back on everything you order from Amazon. And are they giving any incentives right now? That's interesting. At one point you could get 70 bucks credit right away. And sometimes, so because I already have mine, it may not show up here, but you may, uh, you may be able to get a discount on it. It's a chase card, but 5% back, and basically, when I go to check out on Amazon, it just says, oh, you've got $22 credit or something like that. And it's just right there. It gets 5% back on everything you get at Amazon and Whole, and Whole Foods, as long as you're a Prime member. And it's an okay rewards card for everything else. I use a 2% card for uh, cash back, my Fidelity or my uh, uh, Fidelity or uh, the City uh double back card. So that Royce, did that answer your question Royce? So the Apple card is a credit card and it, it's no different than a regular credit card. There's some good features on it, but it's not the best highest rewards card, except for the fact that you get 3% on everything you buy from Apple with it. So, and I wanted to point out this other program, Photo Lemur is a pretty cool program. And I just didn't have it installed on this computer. But it does, it sits there and it'll do a lot of the different things in one shot. So anyone else feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question or raise your hand. Ken? Yeah? When I take a bunch of photos like on a trip with my iPhone and then I view it afterwards, on occasion I'll get multiple copies of that same shot. So. Is there an easy way to just not have to have so many shots? I try to just press, you know, hit the uh, take the picture button real fast, but sometimes I get, you know, two, three, four, five photos of the same shot. Is there an easy way to kind of not do that <laughs> or, or, or delete all those extra photos? 
Well, now, are you doing what's called burst, where you're holding the button down? No, I'm not holding the button down. I'm just pushing it real, you know, like, like you know, just pushing it with my fingernail or finger and, and not even hold on to it. Just, it's like, you know, hitting your shutter button, but don't hold down on it. And does it happen most of the time or just some of the time? Just some of the time. Yeah, um, you may be tapping it in inadvertently more than once. Oh, okay. Um, and then no, there'd be no way to really, other than just manually go in and get rid of the ones you don't want. Um, okay. Better to have too many than not get the one shot. But uh -huh. um, so the other thing is on your iPhone, you can, you can use the volume up button to take a picture also. Oh, okay. And you can use your iPhone, the camera, the camera app on your iPhone to actuate it. So the, if, if you're in one nice way to do it is if you have the, the regular earbuds, the volume up button will also actuate the shutter, which is a really nice thing. Let's say you have your, your phone sitting on a tripod. If you tap the volume up button on the wired AirPods, it will actuate the shutter. So on the volume, when you use the volume up button, do you have to have the, the phone be in that phone application? You have to be in photos for it to do that. Otherwise, okay. otherwise it's just going to raise the volume. Got it. Okay. Thank but you. I've inadvertently done that, and that sometimes people don't realize that they actually hit the volume button, and it's actually taking the photo each time. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Feel free to speak up. And I have that issue with um, taking several frames when I just pushed the iPhone once. But I thought it was because I was in live mode when I was taking the picture. Do you think yeah, that's so, why? The so live mode is different, and it does take multiple photos. But that's why I asked him if it was consistent or not. So at the top of the screen on the phone, in fact, we'll go in. Because I covered that last month in the class. But let's go ahead and... Let's bring my iPhone up. So if I'm in camera mode, so if I'm in camera mode in the upper right, you can see live photo or not live photo there. So with it, with when I tap it, live is off with the slash through it or live is there. What live will do is, uh, the way I like to describe live is, let's say you're trying to take a photo of people, three different people, and you want them to all jump and you want to get a picture of them with all of them off the ground at the same time. You would take a live photo. So it's actually, well, here's my, uh, let's use my, right here is my, uh, uh, ceiling fan so let's do a live photo with it okay so now when i go look at this live photo come on so now oh that's interesting it just didn't seem to do it i thought i had live on Hmm. Oh, there it is. So there's, here's the loop of it. See how it's movement? That's live photo that's done that. So because of my phone's being displayed is why it messed it up. So those are full frame photos. And then what it usually stores is it stores the one that it thinks is best. And, uh, then it, it you can set it to delete the rest after a day. So uh, that that's full frame of each photo. So it's really like a video, but it's actually a bunch of still photos, if that makes sense. That was a good question. Okay. So don't you need all those frames to to show that movement? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. But see, but see, live photo is not designed to be video because video does what's called interlacing, where live photo doesn't, they're a full version of each photo. So, uh, and that's on by default usually. So, 
Um, I do want to turn mine off because I, I really don't like live photo. It's just, it's just me. Um, but there are certain circumstances where you would want to do that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Other questions? How do you turn live photo off, Ken? So when you're in live photo, it's in the upper right corner is tap it and then tap it again with the line through it. Now, I want to show you a setting on your phone. So if you go to settings and we go on down to camera, camera, what up there it says preserve settings. So in camera mode, if you want it to, if you do it on live photo and you always want it on live photo, but you're just turning it off temporarily, you would slide that so that it's always on. Whenever you come to it, live photo is always on. I actually want that. I want to preserve the setting. In other words, if I have it off, I want it to always be off unless I turn it on for that particular show one. And that's what that live photo at the bottom, this little slider right here is. Now, camera mode up on the top is the same thing. For instance, if you're if you always take in video, you want to set that because if you if you if you're using video and then you go away to another app and then come back, it's still in video mode. So I don't want it, I don't necessarily want it to preserve the mode. <clears throat> I want it to, I want it to reset back to photo because that's the mistake a lot of people make is they go to take a single shot and they're actually taking a video and the video is not as high a resolution as the shot would be. Okay. All right. So I don't, any other, and they don't have to be questions on photos. Feel free to ask away if, uh, if there's any other questions on anything. I'm going to take a. Ken. Ken. Go ahead. Um, this is Anne. I'm new to your class. Um, uh, my question is, I turn on my uh, iCloud and I have a lot of photos uh, on iCloud and I have to keep paying to increase it. So what do you suggest was the best way to manage it now? Well, <clears throat> so <sighs> it's money well spent if you want to preserve your photos because what happens is is all your photos go up to the cloud the full size version of your photos so therefore it is pretty much a backup and your device may not have enough room to have all the photos down there full size so that's the conundrum i'm in and that's why you see i don't have icloud photo on because i have uh, something like 80 gigabytes of photos and I don't want to be burdened with that up there. So I do a little bit different strategy. Um, it is very useful and the rates are pretty reasonable. But, um, and again, remember if you have iCloud library on, if you delete a photo one place, it's going to delete it everywhere. So you're, you're kind of stuck with that. Um, are you paying for what the two terabyte space or what are you paying for? How much am I? Uh, is more than 10 bucks. Well, it should be 999 if it's two terabytes, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think that's around. It's getting there. It's filling up too. It is. So two terabytes is a lot. That's a lot of photos. I mean, whew. so, uh, and the way you can check your space on the Mac is you go up to system preferences, go to iCloud, and it'll show you right here like i'm using two terabytes and i still have 1.6 available so if you're on a two terabyte plan that's something's up because two terabyte or a, even a terabyte of photos is like probably a hundred thousand or more photos actually more than that i would believe so you can check on that or on your ios device go to your cloud settings and see okay um let's see and there was somebody else that had another and welcome Ann, by the way and somebody else has another had another question there oh, Bertie. hi bert yes i typed mine in under the chat i think it's the bottom one i feel like i'm in the cave age so if i take 
interesting photos on all these walks we've been having lately. I will save it. It's on my iPhone. So then I email, I select and email it to me. And then on my MacBook, I can pick it up. I have the photo. Then I drag it to my photos on the MacBook. And that's how I'm getting photos on my MacBook. So then I can um, edit them or put them in albums and that. So how do I streamline that? Well, yeah, it's very easy. So let's share my screen on the Mac. I have an old MacBook and I have a new iPad. And a yeah, so first of all, as I talked earlier, if you go in to photos and have, uh, if on your iOS device and on here, if you don't want to use cl cloud library, which is fine, turn on photo stream and they will automatically show up on your other device. Both devices have to have photo stream on. It's under iCloud settings on your iOS device, but it's under photos in iCloud on your Mac. But another easy way to do that, if you, rather than emailing it to yourself, because then it's gobbing up your email, you can see I have 28 photos selected on my screen right here. If I go up to the little share thing and I come down to AirDrop, when I click AirDrop, it will show what other devices I have available and it should show up. I don't have my laptop active right now, but it says I can send it to my iPad or my iPhone and it gets sent directly to them and then they go right into photos. Okay, my old 2009 MacBook does not have AirDrop. Probably not. Right, obviously not. But you can, I think you can turn on photo stream if I'm not mistaken. From the MacBook. Yeah. So photos, preferences, photo stream. And then make sure it's on on the iOS device too. Okay, maybe I just don't have that clicked on both devices. Thank yeah, you. It has to be on both and it goes up there. And again, you, if you want them to sync consistently, you can use iCloud Photos. But again, I, I discourage that before I know how big your library is or anything. It, it's huge, I'm a grandmother and yeah. I like to travel. Yeah, and videos take up a lot of that space too. So, and that may be an issue too, is iCloud library does store your videos. So uh, if you go through, pairing a couple of videos out is the equivalent of taking out thousands of photos. Okay, that's a great idea, thank you. Yeah. So look at that, and actually you can go in, if you look on your, you have a, uh, on your iOS device specifically, if you go to albums and click videos, they're right, they're right there. Okay. It'll have an album for your videos. I cannot get a screen like that on my iPad. Well, let me share my iPad then. Hang on. Thank you. Because I'll be able to show the videos on that. So if I go here, I tap photos in the lower left. Oh, okay. And that's this. But then if we go to albums, and this will go to yours, if you go down here to media types, and I tap videos, all the videos are there. And depending on the length of the video, this is a good way to go through and see if there's any that you can get rid of. Wonderful. I have my afternoon work cut out for me. Yeah, well, what else are you going to do, right? <laughs> it's too darn hot. Oh, oh and by the way, so we talked about live photos. There's the, obviously live photos are here also. Oh, that was me in Amazon. Then uh, burst photos. If you've pressed and held burst, they're right there. So what these are is these are, quote, albums that it makes itself. Screenshots, just those shots that you take of a screen. Those are there screen recordings, they're all, it's basically taking, oh, and there's selfies. If you've taken selfies from the front camera, that shows up. up. So, and again, that's on the iOS device, it shows that. All right, let's look if there's any other questions on the board. If not, feel free, you guys. We've got a, probably time for about three more questions. Can I have one? Go ahead. Quick bit of help here. I've gone to my iPad and I was trying to do some adjustments on some photos and it's hung up on uh, 
adjust where I went in and it, and it tells me it's there's uh, any button there I press does not work and it's right, you're right. yes and I hit done and nothing happens no so double tap the home button the home button okay and when you double tap that, you get a carousel of all your open apps, correct? Yes. Take the one that's photos is what we're in and swipe it up and away and then just go back and tap on oh. photos again. It's just, it's just gobbed down for some reason. Thank you. Your bet. So uh, Roy says, you took a photo of a hummingbird. When I send it to other Apple people, they can't see it if they, they can see it move if they touch the photo. Yes, that if yeah, but that may not work. So the idea was he took a live photo, wasn't a video, right? Um, Royce, unmute yourself, Royce. Uh, no, that was just a picture I took, and and, it was? and for some reason, uh, when people got it. Or, I mean, I could touch the photo and the hummingbird moved and when they got it, they could do the same thing. Yeah, and they're, but they're on Apple devices, right? Right, right. Yeah, so that may not work on Android devices. So no. that, that was a live photo and that's a pretty good, pretty good time to do a live photo. Right. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. How was the, how was the hummingbird? Pretty cool? <laughs> it was great. Great. All right. So, uh, I, go ahead. Did, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, go right ahead. Uh, when I get pictures and I try to put them into a, a folder, it says you will override pre existing pictures, and then I'm afraid to put it in. Do I? Is this on a Mac or iOS device? On, on, on a MacBook Air. So let's. So you, you, it's, it says you're going to override. Yeah. It says you're, you will now override and lose. So then I'm, I'm afraid to put anything in and I can't store it. That's interesting. Um, it's always the same message. You will, you will override. And, and that's no matter where you put it. No, when I'm trying to just, you know, save it. I get a new photo and I want to save it. Then I go to... Oh, wait, you get a new photo. Yes. And it, it, let's say it's my grandson and I have a folder named Henry. And then I go and say Henry and then it says you already have Henry and you will override it. So I, I'm so afraid to... You have that photo in there is what it's saying. And if you've made adjustments... No, you're... these are new photos. They just come in. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I can uh, have you share your screen with me here if you'd like. If you don't care about other people seeing it, this is a, a learning. We can show you how to do that if you want. You're on your Mac right now? Yes. So go to the, uh, right in the middle of the screen in Zoom, do you see the green box? Yeah, Zoom box. The green box, click click that. I don't see any green. Oh, share screen? Correct, click that yeah. and click share in the lower right. And then um, go ahead and we can all see your screen now. So go ahead and go to your photos. All right. And now show me what you were trying. I, I want to see the message. Well, I, I don't know if it, I probably don't have it, have it to, right now. Oh, you've got it from your inbox. Well, here's it. So that, so there's a, yes. Yeah, so, so just click where the paperclip one is. Click, no, there's any with a paperclip, like from Lynn. Yeah. Click that. And then how you're trying to drag it from here. Okay. So this is actually All a right. great example. So, All right, here's a picture. Yeah, so scroll back up on that. And this is a great thing to show you how to get photos from your email into there. So scroll farther up. I want to show you something. Nope, go to the top. All right, now hover your cursor over this bar right here. 
right at the top. Oh, down, down, right, right where that line is. See the next line down farther? Right above hi mom, there's a line. Okay, do you see that three on the right hand side? No. Yeah, move your hand down farther. Move your cursor down about an inch. Farther, farther, yeah. right there. So go over to the three and click on the three. Oh, the three, there it is. Okay, so click on that. Okay. Oh, and then click on it again and come on down and say export to photos. Oh. oh. And click export to photos. And that just added those three. Now, what's not added them yet? So you can say import to wherever, or if you click, oops, put your cursor back down. And if you click on the upper right there, say import all new photos. Oh. Click that. And now it's just put them over into here. That's so much easier. Now go ahead and click back on mail. On the on the dock, click on your postage stamp. Oh my god! Thank no, you. no, not there. Yeah. Click on the postage stamp on the dock. Oh yeah. Okay, you can click up in the corner in that mail right there. Just don't no don't click the red dot. Just kind of in the in the blank area where the black is. To the right. 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 Stop. Click. Okay, now if you scroll down to those photos you were just looking at, on the right hand side there, no, move your cursor to the right a little and scroll down, scroll down. So you could click here and add it to the photo too if you control click or secondary click, but it's so much easier to use that little download thing up in the very top. Yeah, I, I never noticed it. Yeah, well, because it's, it's Apple likes to hide that stuff from you. And when you hover your cursor over, then it shows up. So that, that's a good tip for everybody. So hopefully people got that. Again, scroll up so we can show them where it is again. Nope, right on that. Scroll up on the window that's on the right. There you go. Scroll up. Nope, got to bring your cursor down first. It's got to be in the window. Bring it down. Bring it down. More. Keep going. Keep going. Now, scroll with your mouse, just scroll up. I want to see the top of that screen. All right, just grab the scroll bar on the right-hand side. No, oh, okay, that got rid of it. I'll, sh I'll show you guys how to do it on an email here on mine. So. Okay, so if I go, I'm, I'm kind of out. I'm oh, okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, let me look for an attachment here. Actually, here's an attachment. So this is my. So when I when I have an email that has an attachment like here, if I hover my cursor over this bar, you can see here that it says I have pictures. I can look at each of those, or I can export right to photos. So again, from mail, if, it got a, if it's got a paper clip, it means there's an attachment. You bring it over here and you just hover and all of a sudden you've got this paper clip and the five and I export. I'm not gonna export these to photo. This is my informed delivery, but that's how you get them very easily from email into your photos. So where is it exactly under the? It's, it's if you're in mail. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back on, on the screen. Do you see my screen with a little line right here? I'm on my screen. No, but you need to look at my screen. Do you see my screen? Click on Zoom in the dock and you'll see my screen. Anyway, there's a line below the address. And once you get your cursor over it, it will highlight. If you're not, if you're not over it, it's not there. Oh, it's yeah. by the address. And below the address, that line, and you click on it. Oh, I see. Okay, any last questions? If not, stay cool. Wow, that's, that's clever. 
Yeah, it's very, it's, yeah, but it's too clever. It shouldn't be hidden like that. Oh, it should, it should be obvious. Why the heck don't they make it that visible all the time? I just, I totally disagree with stuff like that. It's not like it takes up. Can I have, I have a non, a non photo one. I've tried to change my name on for Zoom. Uh huh. And it, I have to change it every time, and I can't find where to change it permanently. You have a Zoom account. Uh, no. Okay. I guess not. I just have the app. Okay. You could sign up for a Zoom account, but um, yeah, that's weird because you should be able to. Because every time I I um get in a Zoom call, it just says you know lowercase Mary, so I have to change it every time. Right. Not a big deal, but I just thought I. No, oh, but it, it's. I think it's like the first time it asks you, but. Uh, yeah, M must be it. Okay, um, no big deal. I I I changed mine, and I had to do it two or three times. But I just went into participants, and changed my name from Madeline to Lynn. And this time when I signed on, it was Lynn. So maybe it just takes a while. Mm. Okay, I'll give it a try. Thank you, though. Ken, how do you put a how do you put a background uh, behind you on Zoom? So it depends on the computer you have. Um, go up to your Apple logo and come down to about this Mac, and tell me what you're running. Oh, I I don't have it on. Yeah, I don't have my Mac on right now oh you're on an so iPad. just just show yeah just show me yeah, i'm it's watching it, it on my ipad there's some if you go back in the there's some zoom things we've we've done on the ipad it's a little more cumbersome but it all depends how new is your mac uh it's fairly old <laughs> then it probably won't okay. record it because it needs a a better graphics card i um, see and okay I, mine is catalina if you just well then well it depends on how old it is but it should work but so if you just do Zoom mm -hmm. uh, virtual background, it walks you right through. So if you want to try it, anybody can. If you go okay. up, click on Zoom in your dock on your Mac. I'm not going to do it on the iPad, but on click on Zoom on your Mac. Mm -hmm. Go up to preferences under zoom.us and click on virtual background. I see. And when I click on virtual background, you'll see, first of all, you want to make sure it doesn't say green screen. I have a green screen at the bottom. You want to deselect that because you don't okay. have it. And then you would go up here and hit the plus sign and you'd go find your photos. Now it won't reach into your photos library. You have to actually go into photos and export them to somewhere on your computer, the photos you want to use. And then you can, then they get, they fill this palette, so to speak. And that's where you have things like that and Machu Picchu and <laughs> uh, Sun Valley, the coast, the Yosemite, wow. Austria, sunflowers. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, and my favorite. And I think um, changing the virtual background or adding a photo, it's actually easier on the iPad because it'll let you go right into the Photos app. Yeah, yeah. And so- You have to export the picture. Yeah, on the iPad, you go into uh, More, which is the three dots on the upper right, and click Virtual Background. And then you just hit the plus sign and from the plus sign, you navigate to the photo you want to use. Actually, here, hang on. I'll see if that, it may not share it well. So let me try that. So if I go in Zoom, tap more at the top in the upper right, and come on down and tap virtual background. And then in the center, I hit the plus. 
and then it takes a minute, it takes more than a minute, but it's going into your photos. And it's locked up, so it's trying. But anyway, that's how you go in and you select your photo. And oh, there they went. It takes, I always time out before it. Come on, it's because I have a big library. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so there it is, and we'll just pick one anchor watt. So then I hit done. And that's now my virtual background for my iPad. And Thank it you. looks kind of ugly, but mm. it works. Okay. Let's Thank you very much. It's a great class. You will stop mirroring. There we go. Stop. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and board new members, we're going to use the same link at one o'clock. So we will see you all then. Randy, if you want to hang, uh, if you want to log out and come back in on the same one, would you want me to? Why don't you text me with your? No, actually, I'll I'll send you a text for another meeting room right now. So look for that text. What's it one? The board meeting? Members are welcome. It's boring. <laughs>